Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Warning, I'm going to speak directly because I don't feel like censoring myself or mincing my words. So if you are easily triggered, please do not watch this video. Thank you. Depression affects everyone's life at some time or another. Depression comes in a wide variety of forms, from mild unhappiness to a chemical imbalance in the mind. There are many different symptoms that reveal a person's problem with depression. If left untreated, depression may continue to develop into a serious illness or even death. Depression is a psychological illness, much like bulimia or anorexia. It affects the mind as much as it does the body. Depression is directly related to many other disabilities, from eating disorders to low energy levels to even social difficulties and suicide. Suicide is an occurrence in life that society does not like to talk about. The stigma surrounding suicide is vastly misunderstood, and it's really unfortunate because a lot of people suffer from suicidal thoughts. According to the American Association of Suicidology, there are approximately 1.3 million suicide attempts every year. That is one every 24 seconds. Suicide is currently ranked as the 10th leading cause of death in America, while homicide is ranked at number 16. Now let that sink in. Suicide is happening far too often, and it's starting to become commonplace in our society. On Friday, September 2nd, Gustavo Arnell, who is the chief financial officer of Bed Bath & Beyond, he jumped to his death from his luxury high-rise apartment in Manhattan. All of this took place in front of his wife. He said no words, he left no note, and he just chose to throw himself off of the 57th floor of his high-rise luxury building. This morning, police are investigating the death of Bed Bath & Beyond CFO Gustavo Arnal, the executive dying by suicide, plunging from this luxury high-rise in downtown Manhattan Friday. Arnall's death coming days after the struggling retail giant announced it would close around 150 stores and lay off a fifth of its employees. Good morning and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing okay mentally and spiritually. This video may be triggering, so once again, please proceed with care. Yesterday, rapper 600 Breezy took to social media to let everyone know that he was mourning his girlfriend's sudden death. 600 Breezy posted a social media tribute to his girlfriend. They had been together for two years and her name was Raven Jackson. He included not only photos and videos of themselves together, he also screenshotted what appeared to be her suicide note. In the text messages, Breezy's girlfriend is telling him that she's tired and she's been dealing with a lot of bad thoughts for years while waiting for the right time to act. She mentions that she is hanging out on a bridge and notes that she gave up a long time ago. This is what 600 Breezy wrote on his social media page. He says, my baby was hurting and I did everything I could to show her nothing but love and keep her going. I put everything into her, her business. I believed in her. I worshiped the ground that she walked on. She is gone forever. I hate myself. Please, when your loved ones are showing signs of any mental damage or health, please take them serious. This is real. This is what she left me with. And I'm supposed to be able to continue to live. At Raven Jackson, you always told me that you wanted to go out young so that you can get that love that you deserve from others and be a legend. But what about your family, baby? What about me? You left my heart so empty and broken, lifeless and alone. And now, no matter what they say or what you say, I'm going to forever feel like it's my fault. Please, y'all, pay attention to the signs of depression or mental health. So now I'm going to read you guys the screenshots of their conversation. This is a conversation that Raven sent to 600 Breezy. So once again, proceed with caution. So she writes to Antonio, I'm just tired, baby. I was dealing with these thoughts before you met me. I was just waiting for the right time. This is my third time writing this for real. It's nobody's fault. I've been tired for a long time. I gave up a long time ago. I just do a good job of hiding it. Right now, I'm writing this. I'm remembering us happy, looking at our videos, imagining how beautiful of a bride I would have been. It's 5 p.m. here, and this bridge is actually nice. I wish we would have came here together. Some homeless people sprinkled in 
but not too many. I'm thinking about how this will feel. I used to joke about how recklessly I was living my life before meeting you. Truth be told, I would put myself in dangerous situations because I didn't care about living. Living just always seemed overrated. I'm sorry, man. It's one thing to ruin your life, but I had to go and end mines too. Understand that this is my choice. This is what I wanted. This is what I've wanted for a while. I just don't fit here. I'm not happy in this world. I can't take it anymore. I don't want to be here. It's too much on me. I wish I could take it back and undo everything so I never even called you. Nothing seems real, Antonio. Not my business, my relationship, not even me. My heart is weak from stress and my ovaries hurt, but they keep saying nothing's wrong. I feel like I have bugs on my skin that won't come off no matter how many times I wash. You were the best thing that happened to me in a long time, Tony, but I know I'm a lot to deal with. We're as distant as we've ever been. I love you with all my heart. I couldn't take ruining us. I'm losing all the people I love. I want to leave here knowing that I didn't fuck this one relationship up. I wish you were here to send me off like murder did Teak. You probably wouldn't have been as nearly understanding anyway. And as much as I want you to see my point of view, I don't want our last conversation to be an argument. So that's why I was so quiet. I really just wanted to hear your voice one last time. You have every right to feel what you feel towards me, baby. I love you, Antonio. I pray I get to love you in a better way where I'm a better version of me. You deserve that much. So you guys just heard me read that. And that message was just incredibly sad to read. When I first read that, my heart was like literally broken for her because you can hear the despair and the desperation in her messages. I also went to go do some digging because she kept saying that she was in pain and that her ovaries hurted. And I found out that she had been diagnosed with cysts and fibroids on her ovaries. And here's a video of her from December where she's talking about her, you know, going from doctor to doctor seeking help they're not giving her proper pain meds it's really sad y'all go ahead and check this out for like four weeks i had cysts in my ovaries so i was like in a lot of pain i had went to um the emergency room like four times before they even told me what was going on and at first like they sent me home with like some ibuprofen i'm like bitch <laughs> i'm not i'm not even you know, not even on a disrespectful shit, y'all. I was really in a lot of pain. They sent me home with ibuprofen. So I but anyway, so they gave me some naproxen. Then when I went to the doctor the fourth time, um, they gave me the naproxen. But no, they gave me the naproxen before they even did that. Okay, they gave me the naproxen after they did the ultrasound and the x-ray. So I went to the doctor the fourth time after they gave me the naproxen just to... I would make sure that everything was okay because I hadn't went to a real gynecologist. After they gave me the x-rays and stuff and told me that I actually had a cyst, they told me to follow up with a gynecologist. I went to a gynecologist um, and I was just telling them everything. And they act like they didn't care. Like, they was just acting like it was normal and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, cool, whatever. Can y'all just give me a stronger pain medicine? I was like, no. And I told them they gave me ibuprofen. I was like, no, we're not going to give you any stronger pain medicine. So I was like... Well, the other doctor gave me naproxen, and they was like, oh, it's supposed to be an anti-inflammatory pain medicine. Is that okay? And she was like, oh, yeah, that's fine. And I'm like, bitch, so you was going to send me home with some ibuprofen, knowing what type of pain I'm in, when you could have gave me naproxen? You know what I'm talking about? So, that's what happened. I don't know what's, what what look I want for my body. It's just I want to be healthy. Like, you, you take shit for granted. I never really took my health for granted, but you take shit for granted until something happens to you and you can't. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just can't. And that was what happened. So, it's like, my my ideas for my body now, I just like, I just want you to be healthy. All right. So, you guys just saw that video. So, while many people are sending 600 condolences and words of compassion, other people are dragging him online and saying that he had no business posting Raven's final moments. His own baby's mother, Queen Key. Um, they have triplets together or alleged triplets. Um, she went off about the situation last night. And this is what Queen Key had to say about her children's father's emotional posts regarding his late girlfriend. She says, grown ass goofy on the Internet, crying like he's not a whole disgrace to society. Just a sad ass bitch. My condolences to her actual family. I apologize that this weird ass nigga even got motherfuckers commenting goofy shit on her passing. 
Now, personally, I feel like this was definitely not needed. Um, I get that Queen is upset because he does not see these triplets. He has never taken care of the triplets. But to use this girl's death as a way to insult him, I just feel like it wasn't needed. If you want him to take care of his kids, get the DNA test that he's been asking for, take him to court, and hold him, you know, legally accountable for taking care of those kids. I think bringing up her name in this situation just to get back at him was kind of spiteful and it's not a good look. So on that note, you guys, thank you so much for taking time out to listen to this video. Let me know what your thoughts are concerning the situation. How do you feel about it? How do you feel about Raven's passing? Did you follow her on IG? And how do you feel about 600 sharing this message? Do you think that he's hurt and he was just grieving and just looking for support from his fans and people online? Or do you feel like he's being a clout chaser as Queen Key is suggesting? Please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like the video, share the video, and make sure you're subscribed. Thank you guys so much for the support, and take care of yourself and your mental health. I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us in tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so tell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.